Have you ever stopped and thought of the weird things Christians say? They have their own lingo. If Christians were to place themselves in the perspective of a non-Christian, they would find that most of what they say sounds pretty sketchy. For example, are they born again? Did you die to yourself today? Bear much fruit. Don't love the world. Don't be unequally yoked. I'll pray for you. And are you saved? I feel as though Christians are doomed to freak people out. But I do want to answer this simple yet thought-provoking question. How can someone be saved? First question you need to ask is, well, saved from what? You see, according to the Bible, there is a heaven and a hell. No in between. You go to one or the other when you die. Matthew 18.3 reads, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. In 2 Corinthians 5.8, Paul talks to Christians and tells us, Yes, we are fully confident, and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. From these passages, we understand that heaven is a place you can enter, and to be absent in the body, or to die basically, means to be present with God, who is in heaven. Let's look at hell now. Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 and 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It's in these verses that we see that hell is a real place, and some people will live there forever. Check these verses out. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. John 5.29 And come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. From these passages, we know two things. You're going to die, and you're going to resurrect when you die, either to life or to condemnation. Oh snap, so if the Bible is true, regardless if you're a Christian or not, you're going to heaven or hell. And it's clear that people can be saved from hell. So, we know that people can be saved, but what does it take? Our answer is found in Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Did you catch the answer? It's the gospel. If you are at all afraid of hell, this is your key to be saved. Well, great, we got the gospel. But what in the world is the gospel? First off, the word gospel literally means good news. But why is it good news? Let's look at the gospel's definition to get a clearer picture of what it is. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 5. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. The gospel here has four points. One, that Christ died for our sins. Two, that he was buried. Three, that he rose again. And four, that he was seen. If the gospel is the key to our salvation from hell, these points need to be looked at very carefully. Let's look at point one, that Christ died for our sins. Step one to being saved is understanding that Jesus died for your sins. So we know that sins are wrong things you do, but how can you understand how you've sinned? You need to look at God's law. When you fail to keep God's law, you sin. And the punishment for one sin is hell. Let's look at some of the commandments. Sixth commandment, you shall not kill. Now you may say, no, I've kept this one. But because God is so holy, he doesn't just judge your outer life, he judges your inner life as well. Matthew 5, 21 to 22. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. 
If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you were ever angry at someone else without reason, in God's eyes, it's as if you've committed murder. Seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Adultery meaning to have sexual relations with someone else's spouse. You may say, hey, no, I've kept this one. Eh. Matthew 5, 27 to 28 reads, you have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if you ever sexually lusted at someone else, you've broken this commandment. And in God's eyes, it's as if you slept with another spouse. Eighth commandment, you shall not steal. It doesn't matter how small, petty theft is still theft. And if you steal once, that makes you a thief, and thus you've broken the eighth commandment. Ninth commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, meaning you shall not lie. If you lied, then you're a liar. And if you've never told a lie, then you're a liar in denial. So, if you're honest with yourself, we have all, in a way, broken all of these commandments. In God's eyes, we are murderers because we've killed in our heart. We are adulterers because we've lusted in our heart and are thieves and liars deserving of justice. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death. So the payment for sin in God's eyes is death. But please note that death in the Bible isn't physical death where you stop breathing. Death in the Bible is defined as being separated from God. You want to know what makes hell so bad? Believe it or not, it's not the fire. What makes hell bad is the fact that God isn't there. Hell is a place where God withdraws all of his attributes. According to the Bible, God is life, joy, love, strength, light, good, peace, and comfort. Hell is a place where God takes out everything he is. If God is eternal life, then hell is eternal death, where there is no joy, no love, no strength. It's eternal darkness, where there is eternal evil, chaos, panic, and complete and eternal pain. Hell is a place where people want nothing to do with God, and if they don't want anything to do with God and reject Him and His Son Jesus, then they, by their own choice, go to a place where they have nothing to do with Him. So back to point one, we broke God's law. So when you die physically on earth and stand before God in judgment, you deserve justice. You may say, I'm a good person, but according to God's law, you're a liar, thief, a murderer, and an adulterer at heart. Revelation 21, eight reads, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You see, we're sinners deserving to be separated from God, but Christ died for our sins. He took your punishment so you wouldn't have to pay the wages of sin yourself. And in order to be saved, you must acknowledge yourself a sinner and understand that Jesus died for your sins. Point two, that he was buried. Jesus actually died for your sin. He didn't pretend to die. The soldiers didn't make a mistake. He died and he had to die in order to take your punishment. Point three, that he rose again. Jesus didn't stay in the grave, he rose again. And he rose again to prove that you will resurrect when you die and to prove that what he said about heaven and hell is true. Jesus was completely God and completely man. The reason why it was so important for him to rise again is so that he can serve as the connection between God and man. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Illustration time. You have man, and you have God. God is in heaven, and man is here on earth. Man wants to get to God, who is in heaven, but in order for man to get there, he must use the only road to get there. 
The road to heaven and the only way for man to get to God is through Jesus, who is both man and God. Because he is both, he can be the successful connector for God and man. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Point four, that he was seen. According to 1 Corinthians 15, 5 to 6, we know that Jesus was seen by the 12 disciples and over 500 other people. They couldn't be hallucinating. Could over 500 people be hallucinating at the same time? Well, no. In ancient culture, if you have one witness of something, it would be evidence before the judge. But if you have two or more witnesses, that would be definite evidence for punishment or proof of innocence. Today in our justice system, it would work the same way. Witnesses give strong evidence for something happening. Jesus had over 500 witnesses. No one ever found the body. The Roman soldiers that were told to guard Jesus' body freaked out and couldn't find the body after he rose. And there's documented history of all this happening. Jesus is indeed alive and he said he's coming back. Going back to our question, how can someone be saved? The answer is simple. Your sin was great. You lied, you stole, committed adultery, and murdered in your heart. And according to God's law, you deserve to be separated from God by going to hell for all eternity. But Jesus stepped in and paid your punishment by dying on the cross. God came in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, and died in your place. He died so you wouldn't have to. Why did Jesus come in the form of a man? Why did Jesus die on the cross? Why did he rise from the dead? To show that he loves you. Why did he ascend to heaven? To prepare a place for those who receive him. What's God telling you right now? That he loves you. How can someone be saved? You're saved by understanding that you're a sinner. That Jesus being God came to die for your sin and by turning from your sin. This is called repentance. Acts 17.30 Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Acts 3.19 Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Jesus tells us in Luke 13.3 I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. From these passages we understand that God commands everyone to repent, that our sins can be blotted out if we repent, and that if we don't repent, we will perish. The real question is, will you respond? Your sin is real. Death is real. Hell is for real. And it's scary. But I'm here to tell you that you can go to heaven, that God and Jesus are real, that his gospel, the good news, is real, and that his love for you is for real. God is willing to forgive you of all your sin, but you need to turn from your sin now and live for him. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So now that you know how someone can be saved, we encourage you to share this with people who need to hear this message. Our next video will be about the false gospel. So keep a lookout. God bless.